All right, objective 7.2, here we go. So three surfaces used in schematics. Yes, there are three surfaces, just like there's three norths. So I'm just gonna keep going with all these threes. Everything comes in threes in this, um, in this class. So here are the surfaces. So the first one we are very familiar with, it's called the Earth's surface. <laughs> so that is what this green line is up the top here. That is what we look at, see, work with, work on everything, even mining, we would, even if you were mining into this, we would still consider it an earth surface. Um, so that is, that's number one. <laughs> then number two is our ellipsoidal height. So here, this red line, we call it, or, or not ellipsoidal height, but ellipsoid, that's the surface, the ellipsoid. And so it's along here, this red line. And then we have something called a geoid, which is this blue line here. So um, I'm going to get more into detail in the next slide about these surfaces, but I just want you to see the rep like how they relate. So sometimes the ellipsoid is actually higher than the geoid. Sometimes the geoid is higher than the ellipsoid. So it might seem a little bit confusing with this, but we, we can get to it after. So we have, when we measure to mean sea level, we are taking it, taking a measurement from the geoid which is here, and it goes all the way up to the Earth's surface. That is known as my orthometric height. So it is 90 degrees to the mean sea level, not the Earth's surface. So that's important. The next height that we can also get is the ellipsoidal height. So that's going from this red ellipsoid all the way up to the Earth's surface. So that one is often used for GPS, right? So because GPS needs a mathematical, um, surface to be able to handle, we do that. And so it, it uses that, that surface with the G, GPS, and then we convert it to mean sea level because that's what most people want to see. So to do that conversion, we end up with this N, which is my geoid height, or also known as geoidal undulation. I know that's a big fancy word, but so there's the geoidal undulation, again, trying to be 90 degrees to both surfaces. Um, in this class, this is just an introduction to what we call geodesy. And so in this class, this is all you need to be concerned about. There are angles and stuff that get thrown into this, but you will learn that next year in third semester. So we don't need to get into that here, but I just want you to see how these are related and the simple mathematics that come with just this representation. So this is, um, again, just the names of it. So we have our orthometric height that goes to mean sea level. We have our um, ellipsoidal height, which goes down to the ellipsoid. And then the difference between them is known as the geoid height or geoidal undulation. They are related in this way. So big H is equal to little h minus n. Big H is orthometric height, little h is ellipsoidal height, and n is my geoidal undulation. So you can see that mathematically it works really well. We're going to be looking at something very similar to this when it comes to um, comes to photogrammetry later in the semester. But this is this is the kind of the original formula to get us started with that. So what are these really? So let, this is like great. Yeah, okay, we've got terminology. That's nice. So let's talk about these surfaces. So the first surface is the Earth's surface. Like I said, it's the surface we see and walk on. It's where we set up our equipment and we often reference locally to that surface. So we might have a zero set somewhere. For example, you might be setting up like doing a, um, doing a house and you, like out on the prairies and you, you set up a zero at a corner and you want to just make sure, you know, the cut and fill is based on that zero because that's what's being asked. So the Earth's surface, as soon as you set the height to be zero somewhere on the Earth's surface, then you have now created a Earth's surface reference system. So don't think that just because it's the Earth's surface, it, it can't be a height because you can definitely take relative heights between different points. Then we have the geoid surface. Now the geoid surface is a very unique surface. Um, it's very complex. It is very hard to represent mathematically. In fact, geodesists spend their lives trying to represent the geoid. 
and all it takes is one earthquake, one um, volcanic eruption, and the geoid is all messed up again. So then they got to start from the beginning. <laughs> so this is uh, this particular surface is based on the gravitational field of the Earth, also known as the equipotential surface. Um, so again, you'll get more into the detail about what these are when you get into geodesy next year. This is what we call as mean sea level. And what is really fascinating about this is that we've used mean sea level for a very long time. And because we were we did all our exploration through water. And so it's kind of fascinating to see that we have used such a surface to really represent the shape of the earth. And we in my my hands on potato and tennis ball situation, this is the potato, right? So if you were to try to come up with a mathematical equation to represent a potato, it is very difficult. And because it is not necessarily a standard all the time, there is some fluctuation to it. It makes it makes it a soft, squishy potato. <laughs> so um, so that's the geoid surface and, and that's where it comes from. So the mathematics come from gravity and gravitation. Um, the gravitational pull that comes from potential surfaces otherwise than just than that. There's magnetics that come and get involved and everything else. So there's a lot of fun stuff. If you really, really, really like math, ge geodesy is like the most fascinating thing ever. But, um, but anyway, so that's potato. So you can always think of the geoid or the mean sea level that it actually looks like a potato. There are lower places in some spots on the earth and there are higher places in others. So it's really fascinating. It is impacted by things such as like mountains. So when there's a mountain range, the geoid actually like sinks or raises. Um, if in lower areas, if it's like the mantle is lower or there's less like iron in the core in that area, because it may not be standard. Um, you're going to see like anomalies of like little s low areas. So really unique surface, really cool. Check it out, Google it, take a look at what it looks like. The ellipsoid is not a real surface. It really isn't. It, it is actually just a mathematical surface. It, the, the ellipsoid does not exist. The geoid, I can actually measure using uh, like a gravimeter and I can figure out where is the geoid based on based on a gravimeter. The ellipsoid, I can't do that. I actually have to, it's all strictly mathematical and but it, it we use um, a best fit of an ellipsoid to the surface and sometimes that's a local ellipsoid, sometimes it's a global ellipsoid. So it really depends on the earth because the earth is not round it, it, or it is round. <laughs> it is not round like a sphere, I should say. It's not round like a sphere. It is round like an ellipsoid or an ovoid or there's all kinds of different ones, but it's certainly not a sphere. There's actually big errors mathematically if you try to do a sphere like up to 30 kilometers in height, which is pretty scary when you think about that. It's like, hey, I've always thought the earth was a sphere and there's actually an error of like 30 kilometers. So kind of fascinating with that um, in height anyways. So we, we use ellipsoidal surfaces, like I mentioned before, for GPS and other satellites. Satellites really rely on the ellipsoidal surface because it's the mathematics that we have. Um, and it, we try to minimize the error between the geoid and the ellipsoid. So, um, so the ellipsoid is kind of fascinating that way. And I say um, it's a best fit of an ellipsoid to the Earth's surface. It's, it, it's not actually true to the Earth's surface, it's true to the, the geoid. Um, but the geoid also has impacts from the Earth's surface, so they're all interrelated. Um, so the ellipsoid is my tennis ball in my, my little representation that I do. So you, we, I cut the, the tennis ball in half so that you can squish it and make it a little bit flatter. So you make it flat, it kind of pops open, you have lines of longitude that are the the lines that are popped open uh, and that makes our, our ellipsoid. So the idea is that my potato and my ellipsoid are as close in shape as possible to each other. And then the earth surface, we I can like crunch up the, the tin foil around it and I've got uh, the earth surface because it's going to be all bunched up in different places and flat in some areas and everything else. And then um, I also can use the tin foil to do all the map projections that I was talking about in Objective 7.1. So, so that is um, the Objective 7.2. These are the three surfaces. Please make sure you know them well 
and know how they're related, remembering that you know the geoid to the Earth's surface is an orthometric height, that the ellipsoid to the surface is known as the ellipsoidal height, and that the difference between the ellipsoid and the geoid is known as the geoidal undulation or the geoid height. So we'll be moving into 7.3 in the next video, and um, and so that's all for these surfaces.